A couple of years ago, I sought out the worst sports video games via Metacritic score. I played some pretty crappy stuff like NFL Tour, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5, and some soccer game that was so forgettable I'm not even going to bother looking up the name of the game to include it in this very script. But there was one game that always caught my eye. At the very bottom of the list, you have stuff like Ride to Hell, Retribution, and some shovelware BS, but grouped with them with a score of 24 is a basketball game. And it's not just some random rinky dink basketball game where there's no license attached to it. It's actually an officially licensed National Basketball Association video game. It's called NBA Unrivaled. Now, I intended on playing this for that aforementioned video, but the game was completely unlisted. Which sucks, don't get me wrong, but I'm not going to complain about missing the chance to play a game whose Metacritic score is lower than the amount of teams in the actual NBA. So the video came and went, and I'd forgotten all about NBA Unrivaled until PS3 emulation became more prominent. And now that I have a PC that doesn't spontaneously combust when it has to run literally anything, we can finally see what the big deal with NBA Unrivaled is. Well, this is it. This is what I missed out on years ago. NBA Unrivaled was a game that was published by Tecmo, who you may recognize from Tecmo Bowl. The idea of the game is to bring back classic arcade basketball action, like Tecmo Super NBA Basketball or NBA Jam. That's all fine, but the execution is important, and also realizing that it's not 1988 anymore. The developer ACRONYM Games, Oh, I see what you did there. Develop this game, and we know next to nothing about these dudes. Their website is dead, there hasn't been a post on their Twitter since Ebola was a thing, and their LinkedIn is emptier than a Sims bank account. If Giant Bomb is to be believed, they worked on Sony's NBA series. To what extent, I don't know. But hey, they have some basketball experience, and they developed a game called Rocket Man They Came From Uranus. So how bad could NBA Unrivaled be? Well, when it comes to the actual game itself, it's pretty unremarkable. Just playing it just feels wrong. Everyone runs like they have arthritis, and their max speed is a brisk one and a half miles per hour. Like seriously, why are these guys so slow? Players' animations look jank as hell. Whenever you move, you're just immediately flipped to a new position. I, I, I can't explain it, hopefully you know what I'm talking about. Watching your AI teammates and your opponents constantly do this just looks like a bunch of flickering bullshit on the screen. Like, look at this. Hey guys, you know what would be great? If the player models look like someone just kept spamming the horizontal flip on Photoshop over and over again. The whole problem with the game is that it doesn't have the flashy style of other infinitely better basketball arcade games. You can pull off these scripted dunks, which look pretty cool the first time you see it, I have to admit, but at the end of the day, it's just an unskippable cinematic. And there's only about like, six of them? Even actually pulling off an alley-oop is just not satisfying like it should be. When you fully full up your momentum meter, or whatever the hell it's called, you get this game's version of going on fire. Lights and flashy music play, and the ratings go up. No, 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 not those ratings, believe me. Even the dribbling is not only unsatisfying, it's actually hilarious. It resembles a Steve O walking on hot coals more than it does a basketball player dribbling. On defense, the game is no better. In addition to running really slow, there are no pushes or shoves or tackles or punches or kicks or Canadian destroyers or anything that would resemble fun. You just have to keep on swiping for steals. 
And I guess they were in the middle ground here when it comes to realism versus arcade, because the game does have stuff like fouls, even stuff like backcourt violations, three in the key and five second inbounds. This is pretty odd for a game of this nature. Imagine getting roughing the passer calls in NFL Blitz. Like, come on, what is this? You can actually turn on reaching in and shooting fouls, but believe it or not, they somehow make the game even worse. The main thing you can do on defense, going for steals, is completely neutered because reaching in will be called. And get this, shooting fouls will be called despite the fact that the player that was fouled wasn't even going for a shot. The ball just David Blaine's itself towards the basket. You want to see some magic? No. And on offense, you can be called for charging. The game also has play calls too, to the five people who ever thought, hey, I would love to run a triangle offense in NBA Jam. Well, this is for you, I guess? Not that it matters, because each play is just a different rugby scrum with these weirdo character models and animations. NBA Street, NBA Ballers, I don't know, Cartoon Network Toon Hoops is more appealing to look at than this game is. Speaking of appealing, the presentation in general is nothing worth talking about either. Players' faces are just these titan, stone-faced, emoji, Squidward's house looking ass dudes. And everyone looks like this. The referee might actually be my favorite part of this game. He looks like the old dude from Up, but he just went through a growth spurt. You know, a growth spurt at age 78, right? He makes each call with such conviction, and the way he looks back at the screen after he makes the call just makes me laugh each and every time. Hey, check this out. You like that shit, right? At the start of every game and at halftime, you see the same set of racially diverse cheerleaders cycling through the same four animations over and over again. Now don't get me wrong, I didn't expect them to dig out whatever hole the Jabberwockies were stuck in like NBA 2K did, but the thing I'm getting at here is once you've played about one or two quarters of a single game, you've practically seen everything that the game has to offer. I feel like they just tried with the whole classic arcade feel thing, it's just a way to say, hey man, we really don't have anything in this game. Hell, even old school Tecmo games have stuff like stat tracking and season modes to give a game a longer shelf life. NBA Unrivaled doesn't even have that. There's this oddball challenge mode where you essentially run through a gauntlet of 30 NBA teams. To put it in simple terms, you play the same exhibition games over and over and over again. But hey, this time they give you a score differential. Stat nerds, go crazy. Besides that, there's nothing else to the game. We can go into the credits where you can manually scroll through each slide of the credits. Does any other game do this? And the credits have their own exclusive song. I'd play it, but you know, DMCA and all that good stuff. Just so you know, it's really good. Check out Dangerous Goods with a Z at the end on MySpace and CD Baby. Man, that's so dated, I feel my knees and hips cracking just reading that. I wonder if you ever made it, Dangerous Goods. Yeah, the game has such little content, we are analyzing the credits. After NBA Unrivaled's release, it shaped the foundation of our society, and video games haven't been the same since. Wait, no it didn't. It came out on publication, slammed it. Even IGN, the place that's notorious for giving anything at least a 7 out of 10, gave it a 2.5. Metacritic has it at a score of 24, which puts it in Metacritic's top 30 worst games of all time. After release, the game will go on to be largely forgotten with absolutely zero fanfare. I mean, the game doesn't even have its own Wikipedia article, which is insane to think about for an NBA game that was released in 2009. The game would eventually be delisted from online market stores a couple of years after its release. There wouldn't even be an announcement of when the game got taken down, and we wouldn't even know the official date of when it got taken down. I'd like to point out that this was a $15 release at launch. Yes, that's right, less than a pizza pie, but still way less enjoyable. So after playing and subsequently reviewing this, is it the worst NBA game of all time? Nah, not really. It's kind of competent. It's not out of this world bad or super glitchy or anything of that nature. It's just a really, really bare bones game of basketball. Like really, really, really bare bones. I'm talking Dow Sim from Street Fighter level bear. But worst of all time? Nah. You have NBA Live 14, those weird list of Konami NBA games that nobody seemingly talks about. Don't worry, I'll get to these someday. And the without a shadow of a doubt,
worst the basketball game of all time, NBA Jam 2002 on Game Boy Advance. Nicely received. I'll bet he didn't see that coming. Nicely received. Out of the Nicely received. Bounce pass. Nicely received. Oh, that's gonna cost them. Nicely received. Nicely received. I'll bet he didn't see that coming. Nicely received. Nicely received. Bounce pass. Nicely received.